I'm not gonna let you get away with this. That remains to be seen, David. But first, before we fight, and before I kill you, I must reveal to you my true identity. <laughs> yes, it is I, Ted Swanson, from across the street. <laughs> Fucking who? You know, Ted Swanson. Your name, not, not next door neighbor, but I don't call houses down. Come on, this is a big deal. Like, I'm evil this whole time, man. I, we've waved a couple times, come on. What the fuck does that matter? I, I thought it was gonna be some big epic reveal. Like, maybe you were my next door neighbor, or my coworker, somebody that fucking mattered. Well, who the fuck are you? You know what, man, you know what, fuck it, I'm just killing you. Whew. So, yeah, if you've been paying any attention to our Twitter or our Discord server, you notice that I have some mixed opinions on Undead Unlock right now, and Thurman, I think you kind of agree that it was a little too soon for the turn. Oh, yeah. This, it, it reminds me of... Um, <laughs> it's funny. All right. Okay, so let me, let, me, um, let me backtrack here. So I think this video... We'll talk about the chapters, right? But at the same time, I think this video was going to be us discussing our issue with Undead Unlock as of late. Um, but before you guys go on your My Hero Promise Neverland, we hate it, Grant. We don't hate it. Um, I actually have a lot of good things I want to say about these the past few chapters. I just want to get this, I think we want to get this off our chest first. So, David, Red, and I think that, well, me personally, I was like, oh, the, the trader thing was interesting, but I definitely agree with him that it was too soon. And it's, it's giving me... Robot cross laser beam, Samuel, Sa Salmon, Sa Salmon Kun, and the su the summoner, and like a few other um, vibes. Where uh, I don't know about Salmon the summoner, but uh, spe specifically Robot cross laser beam, it got axed because it did an unnecessary time skip when it really didn't need to. So, um, and and after that. If volume cells just plummeted in it and it got act. So I'm looking at the same thing here. Uh, I think the traitor was way too soon. I think it was it was done to a character that we had no information about, that we've only seen off screen, if that makes sense, right? We haven't really seen much of him. And uh, it seems kind of odd to make him the big bad already. Like it, like I feel like it'd make more sense to make him like a just like a scrub, right? I don't really like much of a scrub, but like a Sasuke type, you know, like not the big, 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 big bad. But like, like from what I've gathered from this chapter, he seems to be like the head of these guys. Like unrepair follows his orders, you know, right? Yeah. So um, it's interesting because this is the type of stunt that can have your series get axed because it's way too soon. You're like, there was no build up to it. Like, I, like it's it's one thing that um. It's one thing that Black Clover did, actually, that uh, Red pointed out to me that I have to agree with. Uh, they made a character that we haven't seen, uh, the traitor, and that's not really good, you know? So yeah. um, I'm, I'm going to let David speak here on his thoughts on it, because I, I think I really believe that, um, uh, yes, this is totally out of, out of like, a fucking um, it's traitor out of nowhere. Yeah, it's definitely a little out of left field here, and uh, it's um to quote Sterling Archer, "danger zone territory." But you know, I I I had a little back and forth with Sean McKnight, one of our more vocal commenters uh, over on Twitter, and you know, if I think of it, I can link that tweet thread over here. Uh, but yeah, it, it's just. We're, what, like, 30 chapters-ish into the series, and we know about maybe four of the main cast. So, it's like, who the fuck are you? Like, why the fuck should I care? I have zero fucking investment in Billy as a character, really. I, I know blah, 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 Tatiana, blah, 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 super lollyball girl and him have this little connection because she was saved by him. Yada, 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 I still don't care. <laughs> I, I wanted to be more invested in the cast before we have a, like, coup d'etat over here inside the fucking round table. You know, boom, here here we go. Burns lifting this goddamn round table up. Kill God, blah, blah, blah. 
it, it's just way too soon for this kind of a move, and it definitely, this is the make or break it for the series, because if they pull this off well, it'll be like, very much subverting the expectations of the audience, whereas if they fail at this execution, Undead unlocks on the axing table here. Yeah, and it's funny, too, because this, remember what we talked about in the Shonen Jump uh, videos, that you have to survive two phases of the axe, right? You have to mm -hmm. survive the ranking system, which it did. It's at 30s now. It's at the 37 mark, I think. 37 chapters. I have to look. I have to put it up on my, phone, on my laptop. Um, and two... It has to survive the volumes, and it's doing a pretty good. Well, it's pretty. It's doing pretty well in surviving volumes. In what I've gathered from Oricon is, yeah. Oricon is correct, right? So you know, it, but you know, this this sort of stunt can help you with your manga volumes, you know, because I mean, mm -hmm. it, there's a science when it comes to like you can almost kind of tell like what fans like arc wise. Yep. Because if you think about it, right? Like I don't know if you. I don't, I'm pretty sure Red can answer, but um, or even you, David. Um, Bleach, we we'll use Bleach because Bleach is the biggest example, I guess. Like, I know um, the Fullbring arc wasn't really like most well received, but I, I wonder if that transferred over to the manga volume sales. Like, if like the Fullbring arc and manga volume sales were those sales lower than like let's say the Soul Society arc or another arc that fans are happy with, you know, like I, I'm assuming there's some science there because I, I figured like you, yeah, there's going to be your, all your diehard fans who's going to collect the full thing, even an arc they don't like, but there's going to be a few people who are only going to collect manga volumes of an arc that they like, which, you know, it makes sense. Yeah. Like red only collected the, the Gracefield arc of promise Everland and then quit buying it. Uh, whereas yeah. I am a completionist, even if I fall out of love with the series. And I definitely feel like, Promised Neverland, for an example here, is definitely a better binge than a week-to-week -week read. I, I can agree with that aspect, and I'm I'm in the process of reading all of Black Clover to cover it on the channel. I tweeted about that uh, today as well, yep, and <laughs> and I've been reading Jujutsu Kaisen to hop into that when we pick it up um, after the anime if uh, Red likes it. Or you and I can cover that, and this can shift to you two. Uh, yeah, to kind of... you, you, me and you have Black Clover, me and him have Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah, and that's the plan right now. And I, I've been reading those, and they're definitely better, you know, binges than week to week reads. Because I, when Black Clover first started, for example, here, I was reading it, you know, as it was coming out around the anime time. I, I my first experience with it was the fucking anime, as I've said quite a bit here on the channel and the the sub was abysmal at first and then now obviously it's gotten better and i'm enjoying reading it as a binge uh, i'll be curious what that's like when i start reading it week to week if i still have that passion for it and i i kind of feel like undead unlock has that same effect here it's definitely a better binge because i was binging it before we fucking start covering it here on the channel and it was like whoa this is hype and then now i'm just like ah and I definitely, uh, I feel like Bleach has that same effect. Like, when uh, it was ending, when Red and I were in college together, I was binging it again as it was wrapping up because I had watched the anime. I had read a bit of the manga back in the day. But, obviously, the Full Brain arc was my last real experience with it in the anime. Um, and now, getting the Thousand Year Blood War, I'm going to binge it again before we start covering the anime return. And... I really don't know the manga sales on that. Let's bring that full circle uh, for the full bring arc. But there's definitely some science behind that collecting certain things just because you like this thing or that thing. Because shell space is finite. <laughs> As I've slowly started to find out that I'm needing to buy more bookshelves now that I'm collecting manga more heavily again for the first time since I got out of my toxic ass relationship. <laughs> uh, so yeah. It... it this should be rough collecting again. Uh, so I, I could definitely see like just collecting certain arcs that you really are a fan of or buying like all in ones, which is what I'm doing with Soul Eater, like the, the big uh, one and a half volumes that they started releasing and the uh, eternal editions of Sailor Moon, stuff like that. And Undead Unlock might have got past that hump, but I'm curious to see what this will translate to here because it might have 
kind of succeeded in the the first couple volumes, but will this this arc here sell well? And that all depends on how well this arc pulls off. This coup d'etat. Because obviously the fight here was beautiful. Um, and Sean McKnight and a few others in our Discord server actually pointed out, like, we're one failure away from Apocalypse again. So they're theorizing in our server, like, we might be in for a reset. That might be what the, the game is here. We're just going to reset here because Ragnarok... You know, it's this end and beginning in culture. So, yeah. Mm, that makes sense. Honestly, I, that theory makes sense. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how he how the author does it because, um, like I said, we're in, like, the 30 chapter mark. So, like, like, big things like that, you know, I would only assume would happen, like, in a Like, it's, it's funny because big, like, changes like that usually would happen around, like, the 100, 200 mark in certain manga, I feel like. Like, um, Black Clover had its had its uh, time skip in around 200 range. Uh, My Hero didn't really have a time skip, but it, we're it's we're assuming after it ends after this arc ends, it's gonna have a time skip in like, and it's it's been 200 right now, almost 300. Uh, I know a few manga you usually wait like a bit longer to have a mm -hmm. time skip, so. It'll be it be a bit maybe a bit early because like I'm saying like Robot Fast Laser Beam had a had like a like a chapter like 25 or 35 or 40 time skip and like I'm like holy shit right and people were just like uh, that time skip was not it you know and so like if if I <coughs> Love did one I'd be down yeah like maybe maybe too soon like I like because yeah. what. The writing style for it, it reminds me a little bit um what we used to talk about before of like slow paced series versus fast paced. Under the Luck felt like a slower paced series, but now it feels like we've gone more into like ending mode. Like I know you and Red always talk about how Chainsaw Man in like the final arc, like final breaks, but like it, honestly it feels like the author's on his final break for Under and Luck. <laughs> you know? Like it feels like he's trying to rush to end it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it's like, huh? Yeah, like Right around the time we got aliens introduced, it was like, what the fuck? And then I'm just over here like, okay, I, I guess that makes sense given the lore of the series, What, whatever, uh, I'll roll with that. And then ever since that, it's just been like, fucking train has no brakes, we're just going crazy shit here, crazy shit there, crazy shit everywhere. I'm just like, hold up, hold up, establish your fucking cast. You know, just let me have some character development. Like, obviously, Fuko and Andy are over here. Smooch, smooch, grope, grope, whatever. But aside from them, we really don't get a whole lot from the rest of the cast. We know a little bit about Unjustice. We know a little bit about uh, Tatiana and, and Billy's past. But Billy, we've got one little bit of information out of, really. We got more about the chick in the ball than we do who they're building up as a villain here. And, and that just, to me, is like, did you fuck up somewhere? <laughs> did, did, do I need to go back and Jujutsu Kaisen reread this shit? Uh, I, I am just baffled by how fast this is going right now. I, I still love the action. I still love Andy and Fuko's relationship. But everything else, I'm just like... I I don't know how to feel. It's just a whole mixed bag of what the fuck. And if they do the reset, like everybody's theorizing, then yeah, it makes sense to just sit here and be like, well, fuck this cast of freaks. Uh, let's go to the next. But then why bring on an 11th, 11th seat? Why bother with all of the shit that you just did if you were going to be like, uh, redo? Because mm -hmm. if they do redo it, right? Like, <laughs> will they? Because hmm. honestly, Ragnarok feels like that type of the god feels like that type of character. You know, he feels like that type of character who's just gonna be like, "Oh, you didn't try? Try again. Press the restart button. More JRPG references. <laughs> we love to continue. <laughs> I just destroyed the universe, but it's boring. So we're gonna give you guys another chance, right? It's like he feels like that type of god. So. And it's funny because Unrepair even said, like, his, his intentions isn't really, like, his, they're, they're not just to kill God. They're trying to do what happens afterwards, which is interesting. So what happens afterwards, then? 
you know? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's just, it's just wild right now for me. I don't know if it's just the mood I've been in reading more serious series right now. Aside from like Black Clover and Jujutsu Kaisen, I guess Jujutsu Kaisen falls more into the serious, but like I've been rereading Monster, uh, 21st, uh, blah, 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 uh, Pluto, a bunch of other shit, and I've just been like more in this like sinning esque shit mood. And I don't know if that's kind of turned me off of this wacky, wild ride. But then again, I'm still loving everything in Chainsaw Man, aside from this, you know, the cast of villains just getting revived out of fucking nowhere. You know, that was the only thing that turned me off. Everything else on that I love. So it's just this series just feels so all over the place, I guess. Oh, yeah. Uh, definitely didn't feel that way at the, at the start. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hope he doesn't... Um crash and burn yeah i really like this i like actually yoshi fumi that's his name or her whichever uh clearly uh has a set goal for the series so yeah uh, i'm curious to see because if we do do a reset like people are are theorizing um i think it might be a little bit too early for it mm -hmm. uh yeah so yeah because it, it's almost it's odd because because I, I guess, because I, I, honestly, of all honestly, I feel like maybe it, it we're too close to the ending of like Ragnarok, right? Like I think we're too close to it. Like mm -hmm. if if the author wanted to keep it like keep it somewhat going, it probably would have been like a, oh, because uh, I know it was like they have one more, they're at like ninety nine. Once they hit hundred, it's gone. I, I even want to made it to like ninety or like ninety eight, like in that nineties range, you know? Because it means that they still have. They still have time for a few fuck ups, and that'll give them a chance to know more characters. Maybe you know, uh, have more increased um, like synergy with the other characters. And that would uh, make the failure even more impactful, I think. Like, yeah, 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 for sure. Because I mean, Billy clearly, like, Billy clearly looks like the kind of character. Ooh, so like, even then, like, let's say like, if this whole critter thing didn't happen, and they were like at ninety, like two, ninety three, or whatever. And like Billy was like, we can't get closer, and then end up they end up failing the mission, and then Billy's just like, I think it's time to betray them. That'd be more impactful for like everyone else, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, there's a lot of ways they could have went with it, but I mean, uh, besides the negativities, I, I like the last couple of chapters. The the combat's been really good. The one thing that's good about this series is that the fights are really good. Mm -hmm. I liked how they um uh basically so. Fuko has used the sword now. I, yo, Red, I told you. She's using the sword. <laughs> yeah, it, it's I, it's one of those things that, like, I love the the stupidity of the fights. Like, all the, the, un, the unlock aspect of things is just, like, one of the most dumb concepts that should not work. Yet it works so goddamn well here. And with Andy's, like, finger bullets... Is just so fucking unique of a power because it can be used so many ways. I it's I love the the wackiness of everything. It kind of feels a little JoJo-y, you know, where every power is so stupid but so awesome. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, this guy, it's so funny too because it's just like Fuko is confident enough to cut Andy's head off now. Yeah. Like, Red, Red, I fucking told you. Weapons. Weapons, bro. He's gonna, he's gonna be like, oh, that doesn't count. She's not, she's just using it to cover. So that doesn't mean she learned how to use the weapon. Uh-huh. Yeah. Excuses. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know Red will find a cop out there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's funny, too, because she just kisses him, and she uses his head as a thing. Because... What was great about it is, is like she could like it's so funny too because their ability works so well together. She can literally just touch his arm and then he can cut up his arm and then throw his arm to them and that luck will happen go, happen on that arm. Yeah, it's it, 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 everything works so well in these fights. I it's insane. So we have between that there, the giant pillar thing impaling. It's just. I, I want to see the next couple of chapters. <laughs> Pile cannon, unbreakable. <laughs> I get unluck, unbreakable. <laughs> I, I want to see how the next couple chapters play out to kind of get a feel for where the series is going fully before I cast 
full on like judgment on if this was way, 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 way too soon and too poorly executed, or it was too soon and well executed, if it was not, you know, if it was just soon enough, I, ah, uh, it's hard, bro. It's hard. <laughs> reviewing series sometimes is a lot harder than people think because yeah. you, you have to look at everything through a different kind of lens too. Like not only as a fan, but from a, can we continue reviewing this series? Is this series going to continue to long enough for us to bother keeping with the series? <laughs> you know, there's a lot more that goes into it than just like reading it week to week. And that's what a lot of people in the comments don't understand. Like, when it comes to reviewing a series, there's not only just uh, are we enjoying it? That's why you and Red dropped my hero from the channels. Like, you weren't enjoying reviewing it because it just kind of felt samey. Like, you, you didn't. You kept bringing up the same points, basically. Like, you're not yeah. feeling this arc. You're not feeling this arc. And just like Red and I did back when we did Promise Neverland. And with me, the last three chapters have been on that, like, Goldie Pond, eh. But not fully on, like, I hate it yet. Mm-hmm. It's, uh... Because I told, I told Red, too. I told, I told him he should keep, get, keep reading it again. He should start reading it again because it's getting better. I still don't want to review it, though, because it's just, eh, whatever. It's but mid. This one... Yeah, this one, I mean, it's not mid. It's actually becoming a lot more top tier, uh, but, you know, uh, man, yeah. still, I still probably wouldn't enjoy reviewing it. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe the next arc, I'll change my mind. But, um, yeah, so for this series, I don't think I'm going to drop it yet. No. Uh, I don't. I don't think the traitor portion is a big fuck up yet i live i'm still liking the fights i'm still liking the characters i'm liking that we that we're seeing um more of the round table i i still want to know what this guy's deal is this um the this fucking guy with the balls like all the ball, like does he like a does he have like multiple people inside them or something like it reminds me of like rick and morty how like rick had like the people captured yeah in, like, the thing like it reminds me of that I don't know. Yeah, there. <sighs> See, I I wish we knew more about a lot of the people on the on the cast right now because it it definitely does make it hard to have a formative discussion on like what these people are, what their motivations are. You know, aside from like we know we know a they want to JRPG it, and we've con we will continue to make that joke, and b they want to stop apocalypse by any means necessary like we want to kill god to do this but we also want to stop this reset here basically by doing that yeah. so cool <laughs> that that's basically all the motivation we got is like prevent the end of the fucking world congratulations <laughs> oh, <laughs> um going back to the other chapters here uh this so, um, if you have anything more to say about, like, the negative aspect, David. Uh, like, that that's pretty much, like, all I've got is, like, uh, with the last three chapters, that's been pretty much it, is, like, I, I definitely want to know more about these people. I want to give a fuck, but I can't be arsed to give a fuck right now, <laughs> because I don't so know much about them, you know? But everything else, like, aside from the traitor aspect, has been top tier, as usual, it just seems sudden. <laughs> so, <laughs> there are some good points that I want to touch on in the other chapters. Uh, pay so, chapter 32. Um, <laughs> I love the banter. Between, like, I, it's funny. Unrepair and um, the, the lady that he's with, um, it's so parallel to Fuko and Andy because, like, he's just like, Fuko is just like, oh, it's the it's uh unrepair and his wife and he's just like oh, my wife how she looks she smacks him <laughs> and, then, and then she he retorts with like huh have you lost weight since last song you've gotten pretty heavier and then she's like i did a lot of training these past few months and then she's like you're pretty far away it's really hard to imagine and then she's just beating on <laughs> she's beating on auntie's head because she's upset <laughs> i'm sorry that's it oh yeah Rocking up. That's cute, bro. That that parallel is just so great. This is so funny. So, um, 
I like the banter like that. I like the like the characters are still, you know, the characters. That's a good thing. He, he's not trying to get too much. It's just that shit is just fucking weird. But the one thing I do want to talk about, I think everyone else wants to talk about too, um, is the fact that um, Tatiana said that the ability, this regenerative ability he has, is not his actual ability. Um, so apparently, uh, as you saw, um, Top broke his neck, but he repaired it. Yeah. So, but apparently his ability is unbelievable. It's basically it works with guns. He shoots in directions that are bound to miss his targets, and then the bullets ricochet and ensure it hits. So basically, like a on hit gun ability. It only works with guns, but he healed himself. So what does this mean? Does it mean that a person can have more than one negator ability, or did he was just lying about his ability? Because we haven't we haven't seen it until just now. So it gives me Blackbeard vibes. Not gonna lie. You know, yeah. <laughs> Deadwood reference for sure. <laughs> Give me Blackbeard vibes. Um, yeah, so it's, it's kind of like a an aimbot in a way, and yeah, aimbot. <laughs> so like, <laughs> yeah, video game references. That's that's like ninety five percent of my life. Uh, oh, yeah. Can we talk about how uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Unmove was just like that summon beast looked straight out of Final Fantasy? Like, bro, I didn't get appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, like holy shit, dude. See, there, there's two things that the series does really well. The JRPG references and just generic video game references. Like, a lot of the abilities I'm seeing here are just pulled directly out of, like, gaming lore. A lot of characters kind of seem to be kind of like summons. Like, Burn kind of giving me some fucking uh, Phoenix bullshit here. Almost like a Dragoon from Legend of Dragoon, in a way. Um... Only, like, 5% of people on the planet will get that reference. Uh, <laughs> but, like, we're also getting to, like, shooter abilities now with the Unbelievable. We're getting to, like, healer vibes, too. Uh, a la, like, White Mage, it seems like. But there, there, there's a lot that uh, with the power system that I absolutely love. So... I definitely want to see more of this unbelievable ability to see how yeah. else it really functions. Because he has, apparently he has two. If, from, yeah. what I'm getting, from what I'm getting, he has two. So that's going to be interesting because I thought you could only have one. Yeah. So that's some Blackbeard shit. Also, I'm sorry, but Top is becoming one of my favorite characters. I love his design already. <laughs> I, I love his design already, but just the fact that his the character and his design is just matches so well. He's like, as soon as he gets up, no talking. He's just like, see, he's nothing but a filthy, filthy trade and just goes in for the punt, for the kick. And it, it's just yeah. so fucking cool. Like, oh my god. And definitely, like, the designs here on a Kubo level, like, everything has its own aesthetic. Uh, every character has their own, like, personality through their outfits their the way they walk the way they move and it's something that kubo had down rather well and something that this author uh definitely has down too mm -hmm. and like what are your, what are your thoughts on top's ability so basically I, I do like that we're getting the name of some of these abilities now that's the good stuff i guess yeah unstoppable it's basically you can't stop unless the shape of your body undergoes a dramatic change uh, hmm. That that's like vague as fuck and almost to like a ruby semblance level. <laughs> yeah, I really like. What do you mean? Like, I don't know what that means. I really so what like means. a a lot of the the newer semblances in ruby kind of are left super super open ended and ambiguous because uh, the writer team really kind of wants to be able to retcon the abilities as they go. It seems like it's one thing that Red and I have had a little bit of an issue with with the last couple seasons of ruby. Like, Ironwoods is just, like, vague as fuck. So, <clears throat> this is kind of giving me that vibe. So, like, the body changing shape, that could be... Well, what if what if somebody gets mocking mud? <laughs> like, so, would that be, like, a blood and viscera pool splattered onto somebody? You know what I mean? So, yeah. it's something that could definitely be used in multiple different ways. Um... Well, I'd be curious how it functions fully, and uh, you know, but there's um, I, I'd like to see it like in action more than just this shit here. Yeah, but, 
because there's a lot of stuff that we're going that we're going through here. So um, yeah, we missed what like three weeks, almost a month worth of chapters. <laughs> oh, man. so now that we have so moving on here, um, you have okay. So uh, I'm, I'm just going through here. I want to look at the ability. So basically, okay. So oh wow. Okay. So yeah, 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 yeah. So I have to going back over here. So basically, I think his ability may be a copy ability of some sorts. Yeah, because uh, he used um, justice here on justice. She used her ability. So let's see. So um, he said undead. Oh no, because it looks like he's using. Now that I think about it, he looks like he's using uh, abilities from um, like when he first healed himself. That could be. That could have been like. Uh, Andy's ability, and then when he dodged Top's ability, like, he could have been using Top's ability as well. And with the healing, he could have been using uh, that ability. And then he just used Unjustice ability. He said Undead, and then he was like, "Oh, what a marvel of neg- what a marvel of negation ability! You can pierce into people's hearts. One bound to protect, one bound to live, one bound to live and lead, and one bound to fight proper foes to become stronger." And then she's like, "This is my Unjustice. How's he able to use it?" Yeah. Those are your visions of justice being negated. Yes, not only is this really effective against people, it's easy to use. So he says, I'll gladly take these for myself. Yeah. So does this mean that he has a copy ability? I, it appears that way. Because, I mean, I honestly I didn't think about it that much, but now I'm thinking about it. Maybe he, he lied. Maybe this unbelievable ability was a cover up. You know, like he told Tatiana that, and this is like an ability that he that he stole from someone he killed before joining joining the um the organization, and then he's just been stealing abilities ever since. Because it looks like it. Because from what I've gathered here, he used one ability, and then he used another ability, and then she's like, "Oh, how's he able to use my ability?" And then maybe he can only use one ability at a time. It's yeah. interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, that would also fit the bill of unbelievable. Like, you can't believe that this person has multiple fucking abilities. Mm-hmm. So maybe I'm a believable in this name, but not really what, you know. Yeah. Hopefully we get some answers on that shit. Uh, because using multiple abilities and a cooldown period, maybe, there's definitely, like, yeah, like, it's wild. Like, a lot of this shit, this this batch of chapters that we're covering has been a lot of reveals, a lot of, like, the, the fucking powers all wrapped up into this, like, coup d'etat bundle. And it, it's been boom, 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 boom. And it gives me that Bleach Final Arc vibes where, like, Bankai, 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 Bankai. <laughs> Guy, I don't know, cause I don't know. Um, cause I really want to see Billy fight now, because now I don't really know truly what his ability is, because we got the evidence last chapter that clearly he's cop either copying abilities or plundering them, because he looks like he used Undead's ability and then he used Justice Unjustice ability, and then like, um, if that's the case, then yeah, cause he used Unjustice activate. Yeah. So, does he just have to observe it, kind of like Sharingan rules? Does does he have to actually have contact with him? Um, there, there's definitely I, he's been with the organization long enough to have absorbed uh, observed almost everybody's powers. So, like Sharingan rules, kind of would make sense. But yes. uh, it's definitely one of those things that we need to see more in action before we can fully judge, like, the the capacity of this power. Yeah, because if he can copy abilities, that's fucking broken, dude. Yeah. Copy abilities are always broken. Especially if he can copy more than one ability, too. Yeah, I mean, look at fucking Kakashi and anybody with a Sharingan. Like, it, it's some broken fucking shit, man. So, it's definitely one of those that, like, a reset would be helpful, because it would unbreak the ability and make this all have to fucking go through a reset, but also at that point, then what was 
the point of all of this. Like, that, that's one thing I hate about resets and fiction is there's like, it makes her feel like the everything up to that point had no repercussions because you're just like, mm-hmm. uh, like you mean to tell me for the past blah 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 chapters I've basically wasted my time <laughs> because That's everything's fine. everything's back to normal you know. That's mm, that's interesting. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Yeah, and hopefully, like the next couple chapters, th- uh, clarifies Billy's ability, and a couple of these other ones too, you know, right. and gives some more concrete rules. Yeah. So, um, let me look for the dudes the red here. Seeing anything we want to talk about? Um, I, yeah, I see. This says he says, "Unrepair says killing God isn't our final objective. We want what comes next." Um, he said we're here because you said you'd give us that. I'm assuming there's, there's more to his organization than with Misty Eye. Uh, if- okay, so uh, let's see. Da, 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 I'm on. Okay, let's go back to chapter 32. It looks like um, everything is... It looks like... Uh, I'm not going to say the quality has dropped. I think the trader aspect has caught me off guard, but I don't think it's going to... It dropped, you know? No, it definitely hasn't dropped. It's just like... Uh, like like I said at the beginning, it's kind of like all out of left field because we don't have mm-hmm. enough established about most of these characters. And, and with, when you do a big reveal like this, you have to have investment and you have to have like more motivation other than like, well, we both have the same objective at the end of the day, but it's what comes after that this group is after. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm back on chapter 32. I, I find it interesting. Maybe like their, the flashback they have here makes sense because she's like, Tatiana's like, why did you put on your spurs again? And then why to use the sound to see me wrong? So apparently he's he was supposed to be blind, but then he takes off his glasses. So maybe his ability has something to do with that, right? Like if he looks at an ability, he can copy it. Maybe, but he, if he take, if he puts his glasses on, but then again, that, but that seems too much. That seems too. Um, too convenient. Because, like, one thing about this series that we understand that no negator ability is a blessing. Every negator ability is a curse, mm-hmm. it looks like. Because when a move got his, you know, he killed his parents. When uh, Fuko got hers, she killed her parents, you know. When Tatiana got hers, she killed her parents. So those those are, those are three abilities alone manifested in bad times and they killed their parents, right? Killed people that they love. So <clears throat> I can almost... It almost seems unreal that he would get a convenient ability because I feel like every person in this in the organization has a sad backstory, like their ability manifested during bad times. So, how would a copy ability work? Maybe it's not necessarily like a copy ability. Maybe it's or maybe like it's more like a taskmaster thing. Like taskmaster can like look and like he has like uh, like a good memory. Like I forgot what his ability. Like hold on, let me look it up. Taskmaster has like. Uh, it's kind of like photographic memory he has. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, he has a um. Look at his powers here. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah, photographic reflexes, physical movement, like voice mimicry, stuff like that. Like he has a mem- He has like a mimicry. Like he can. He can't copy powers, but like he can copy like the moves and the actions of like Captain America, Spider Man, like people like that. So, um, like, so he copies, like, skills, techniques and skills from people. So it can only be, like, maybe like that, like a monkey see, monkey see, monkey do thing to where, like, he just looks at them and he can remember, like, what they did. But with negator abilities. But even then, I'm trying to figure out, like, why, like, why, that ability seems too much of a blessing, you know? Like, what's, because no person who has a negator ability wants their ability. So, because it, ru- it this is more likely than not ruins their life. Mm-hmm. In some way, similar similar to how quirks, how quirks were. So, honestly, I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, really hard to say, but um, I I think that's final thoughts now. Um, all three chapters. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, I told Red that when we film multiple chapters, I take my f- rankings up to twenty instead of ten. So. Um, with these three chapters, um, I'm definitely going to give it a, uh, 
12 out of 20 because uh, a lot of good stuff, a lot of good character moments, a lot of good funny moments, a lot of good fights, but the uh, trader review kind of hurt, hurts hurts it hard. Yeah. And... yeah, I'd kind of agree with your rating there. A 12 out of 20 seems pretty fair. Yeah, I think that's that's the biggest thing is the trader thing. And yeah. Then, but honestly, everything else is actually pretty good. The fight, we're finally starting to see the more of a character's um, I want to see what Billy's intentions are, what unrepaired intentions are, what he means about what happens after they, they defeat God. That's the biggest one for me, is like yeah. what happens after we kill God. Because what would be left to the... If we're, if we're playing by the rules of religion, what would be left after you murder God? <laughs> mm -hmm. right, let's be realistic here. Uh, unless we're talking about like Norse mythology rules or some other multi-deity rules where like... There's multiple gods keeping the universe in balance, but then then you also fall into like God of War territory, where like every little god you kill, be no matter how minor, you, everything has its own repercussions. If you kill the god of the sun, there's no more fucking sun in the sky. You kill Poseidon, there's no more fucking ocean. The, the currents are unstable. You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. every everything in that kind of has its own fucking repercussions. So, I'd be interested to see what comes after that. Maybe they're just trying to wreak the chaos here. Yeah, probably. You know? So, I don't know. There's there's a lot of answers we need for a very sudden turn. And I'd be interested to see how they take it from here. The next couple chapters are really going to submit where this series lies in my giving a shit radar. I like definitely will still be content until it gets unbearable or it'll just be to the point where like okay this is a mid-level series for the rest of the time which would be okay for a newer author you know having a beginning series be kind of mid you know most authors don't write a masterpiece their first fucking series mm -hmm. so yeah so that's final thoughts for me like just where do we go from here and how is it handled um that's what I that's what I wanna know. <laughs> and with that, right. with that Um, I think that's peace for me. Yep. Peace. Peace. What was